All right, saltwater fishing university community special day because we're putting in some side scan and we got an expert here, Mr. Charlie Biddlecombe from Marine Installation, class of 1995, Northumberland, just like me. Now Ron here wasn't class of 1995 because he's a baby professor here. But we're the old guys, we're the old guys. So this is a fellow wrestling mate and friend and we're gonna talk about these new Garmin side scans that we're putting in, in a second. But first, Professor, we, from the very beginning, you said we got to get side scans. Yep. We got to get side scans. So for those that are debating it, those have a boat, whether it's a, you know, regular, regular um, offshore boat, center console, or sport fisher, why would you say this is such an important thing? Well, a traditional transducer goes at, you know, a pretty narrow angle under the boat. Well, with this, you're not necessarily marking the bottom. You're marking outwards yeah. on each side. And um, when we're going to be offshore fishing a lot, there's a lot of times where you'll miss a school of tuna, you know, by 100, 200, 600 feet. And they're reaction predators. So if they see something, a, an opportunity for a meal in front of their face, nine times out of 10, they're gonna take it. So, but if they see a meal off in the distance and you know, they're, it's like any other wild creature, they're a little bit lazy, you know what yep. I mean sometimes. So they might not necessarily go out of their way to get it, but if you put it right in front of their face, they're gonna take it. So with that being said, we'll be able to mark schools of fish off to the side of the boat. How far? Um, I believe these will go 1200 feet, won't they? Uh, and Depending on the conditions and what three yeah. you're using. But yeah. uh, normally we'll, we'll probably keep it at like 600 to 500 feet okay. off the side because yeah. the, the further you zoom in with it, the more clear a picture is and stuff like that. With my experience anyway, yeah. this is going to be new for me yeah. as far as Garmin. But um, but yeah, we'll be able to see the schools of fish off through the side of the boat that we won't necessarily drive right over. We'll be able to take and mark a GPS coordinate on the screen, and you could actually engage the autopilot. Boom! And boom! The boat Magic! Turn right around and go to it. <laughs> so, uh, it, in, in my opinion, it's a very critical tool to have. That's because we want you to catch the fish, y'all. You hear that? That's why we're spending money on this stuff. Speaking of spending money, Mr. Biddlecombe, <laughs> spending money with you. All right. So. To install these on a big sport fisher like we got here, what are we looking at roughly in terms of cost? Um, the transducers themselves, the pair is 15, 1600 bucks. Okay, 15, 1600 bucks for these transducers. All right, and then you've got the cost of the install, whatever that is, and then you've got the cost of the potential equipment like the screen or whatever, because not all screens can get side scanned. Is that correct? That's correct. In fact, we had to replace ours because it didn't have the capability, or not replace it, we had to add a screen. Yeah. But you know, you never have enough screens. Never have enough. I mean, we want a supercomputer in there. That's right. All right, sweet. Okay, so let's talk about the actual equipment. So when we look at the equipment here, we have two transducers instead of one, Mr. Bilkum. So why do we have two? Okay, on an inboard vessel, you need to have the transducers ahead of the running gear. Ahead of the gear? Yeah. Yes. Um, on a typical outboard boat, you can have a transom out transducer single on the transom that is still ahead of the engines. It's not seeing any cavitation. Yes. It's fine. Okay. Um, inboard boat, they need to be ahead of the running gear or anything that can cause cavitation. Cavitation is? Small bubbles. Um, bubbles ain't good. Bubbles are not good. No bubbles, y'all. <laughs> so we don't want bubbles because they will cause what with these? It'll cause them not to read. Not if to read. Yep. If okay. there's bubbles underneath the transducer, you're not going to get a good picture. And we need two, of course, because of the of the V-cut on the hull. That's right. Um, right. One on each side because if it's running up against the hull. So this, so this one is, uh, one says S, one says P. Starboard port. There you go. <laughs> Not left and right. It's a <laughs> boat, y'all. All right, good. I'm glad I figured that out before before you had to tell me, Professor, because I'd have looked even more dumb on camera. All right, so so let's say we got the starboard uh, one. Well, that only measures to one side. That's it does right. not go to the other. Yep, from straight down over to the starboard. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Now we got another piece of equipment here. A big old block. 
What in the world is this? That's a fairing block. A fairing block? Yes. What do you, what do you mean by that? Okay, what you do is you, you cut the dead rise angle of the hull into okay. that block All right. and separate it into two pieces. That way you make sure the transducer is straight up and down. So there's two fairing blocks, one fairing block per each transducer. That's right. This bad boy here, transducer, has to be straight up and down. Yep. If you didn't use that fairing block, it would be mounted to the hole like that and you'd be losing the picture straight down. And that would not be good. Nope. Good and one. Professor, be mad. we'd be hot yeah. then. Because yeah. we got to see 600 feet to the left and right, right. not 600 feet up and down. Because right. we already have that capability. All right, so let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes that people make. I imagine this could be one of them, having to use multiple fairing blocks because you made a wrong cut or something like Mistake that. Is that right? number one is measure twice, cut once. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I try to measure three or four times, make sure that angle is right yep. and, and the right direction before yeah. I cut. Yeah, okay. So we've got to make sure the angle is right. Okay, perfect. And when it comes to actually uh, like, you know, installing these up into the hall itself, is there anything we got to know of in terms of drill? It scares me, Professor, putting <laughs> holes in a boat. <laughs> me too. Oh, so no. anything we got to know about that? On a typical fiberglass boat, no, you just, you cut the hole, you seal it up, mount it, and that's it. Um, on this boat, being a cold molded boat, what we're going to do is drill the holes, seal them up with epoxy, yes. let that cure, and then put the transducers in. Ah. It's not much chance of it leaking, but you just want to make sure there's no chance for water to get in the, into that wood. Yeah, we're not we're not into leaks. The water could get in between the layers of the hole right. and make it delaminate. Not, not good. Not good at all. So that's what we're going to do there. Now, in terms of placement, you see you see mistakes people make with that? You do, yep. Um, biggest mistake is mounting the transducer behind something that causes cavitation. Right. Whether it be a strake, a through hull, intake, uh, propeller, any anything sticking down from the bottom can cause cavitation. Um, basically, you don't want the transducer lined up behind anything. Yeah. The thing's gotta have good, clean water underneath those. Running, water. running around. Nice, clean, clean blue. That's right. Gulf Stream water. Can't wait. Golly day. I'm ready. We're in the yard, but we are so ready. We are so ready to go fish. Charlie, we got to get you out there as well this year. You know that, right? I'll ride along. You're now part of the saltwater, saltwater fishing university community. You gotta, you gotta come out there with us and check out your side scan. Well, this is great. We hope this helps you. Hope that it's answered your questions. And of course, we hope to see you out there in North Carolina this year. Manio, come see us at Pirates Cove Slip number 92. You know the professor's gonna be there, he's gonna be eating there, sleeping there, breathing there, doing all of it there, because that's the professor. He's gonna be there all the time. But we're definitely gonna be there Fridays and Saturdays. We hope to see you. Make sure you subscribe. And until the next time, my friends, stay salty.